Burrow or Lamar Jackson? We'll start with the ladies. Let's let the ladies go first. Address me as Kimberly A. Excuse me. I make the rules. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm actually going to go with um, the Ravens on this one. I, I, I trust Lamar. In this particular matchup, only because I watched the Bengals, I covered the Bengals la uh, on Sunday against the Texans. And for me, the loss of T. Higgins is a big deal. The loss of Sam Hubbard is a big deal. Um, I, I trust the Ravens' offense more, given that T. Higgins is out. I think, you know, heading into that game, I talked to Tyler Boyd about how having all three, a healthy Jamar Chase, a healthy T. Higgins, and him, how, it, how people are able to, you double one, you got to deal with the other two. And I think not having T presents some issues for them offensively. Dan Olofsky. I'm taking Joe Burrow tonight. Mm -hmm. Number one, when these two teams met week two, Joe Burrow played on one leg and played well. He's like 27 to 40 for 250 something, two touchdowns. And this is a must win game in many ways for the Cincinnati Bengals. And I called Monday Night Football week three, I think, against them and the Rams. And I just remember. They viewed it as a must win. It was a, how many different ways can we get Jamar Chase to football? And I think that that's going to be Joe Burrow's mindset. If, we, if we're just honest about the performance last week when it comes to them and the Texans, CJ Stroud was absolutely off the charts. Joe threw two unbelievably uncharacteristic interceptions. One, two, maybe one on the run, worst, worst decision-wise I've ever seen in his NFL career. We're not going to get that Joe again. We, we will not get everything that I've ever seen since that LSU year about that guy is the moment, a silent assassin, like he rises. And I just think because of the magnitude of the moment, because how well he played. Now, usually Baltimore's got him. Like you, Baltimore is often his kryptonite. I think specifically Stephen A., Mr. Stephen A., excuse me, oh, my Kimberly God. A. And Either or do. Big Either or do. Yes. Um, <laughs> tonight comes down to first down for Joe Burrow. Yeah. Like if he's good on first down and that offense is good on first down, I think they'll be okay. No Marlon Humphrey likely. For Baltimore's defense, that is a huge deal. If they're bad on first down and they get into third down world against this simulated pressure unit in Baltimore, good night. It'll be a long night. So I'm taking Joe Burrow because of how big this game is and how poorly that we last week's game ended. <clears throat> the desperation, because I, you know, I've, you've heard me say on Get Up this morning that I feel like this was a must-win game. I want to take Joe Burrow because of that, because I yeah. think it's a desperation game. Right. But I'm picking the Baltimore Ravens in this game because Lamar Jackson, Baltimore Ravens have been like the Bengals killer. They really have. Sure. They they've really Lamar had three, and one, three and one against Burrow. Yes, he's 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 had he's had Joe Burrow's number, and I think Kimberly talked about some of the injuries that the Cincinnati Bengals have. The Sam Hubbard one is is a big one. I know we they they play without. T. Higgins last week, I thought Joe Burrow did a, did a pretty good job outside of the interception, but the, the Sam Hubbard one on the defensive side of the ball is a huge one because we know Trey Henderson is already dealing with it with an injury sure. as well. So, listen, Baltimore Baltimore has its flaws and issues as well. We know in, in, in the fourth quarter how Baltimore is prone to give away games. They get up on people, and for some reason, I don't know what it is, with the, or whether it's the – you talked about on get up this morning, the, the defense, pass the, explo plays. the explosive pass plays – in the fourth quarter, they give it up. But I think the injuries for the Cincinnati Bengals, those are some big-time guys that they're missing right. on, on, going into this game. So I'm giving no, Lamar no, Jackson and Baltimore the edge. No Ronnie Stanley tonight, though. That is true. Like, you know, yeah. That is true. And Marlon, as you were saying, doubt yeah, for, for the Baltimore. game as well. So as much as some of those injuries matter, like what, what injury is going to impact the quarterback play more, I guess? Is, do we think it's like T – with Joe Burrow or Ronnie Stanley with Lamar Jackson? I, I think I think Joe Burrow is a elite enough quarterback that he can mask the T thing for another week or two maximum. Obviously, to go on that run matters. Mm -hmm. But ha not having your left tackle, Ronnie Stanley's a huge I, part I, of this I, conversation. I feel you on that. Here's where, I, here's where I'm at with it, y'all. On one hand, I get where you're coming from, and it is Joe Burrow in the Super Bowl two years ago, AFC Championship game last year. We know what he brings to the table. The flip side to it is that Lamar Jackson, 14 and three, lifetime following a loss, winning his last six games after losing a loss. That's number one. I can't What's ignore that? that, right? I can't ignore that. Brace. Number two, the Ravens have had the lead and have held the lead in the final two minutes of mm -hmm. regulation in all 10 games this year. All 10 games. They've blown three of them, they won the other right. seven. But and then you got 28 minutes, 46 seconds. 
is the amount of time they have trailed this season. Man. It's the fewest after 10 games since Shannon Sharp's Denver Broncos team. I believe it was 1998. This is what I'm talking about when you look at the Baltimore Ravens. And so I'm looking at it collectively, and I'm saying, yeah, if you're talking about Lamar versus Joe Burrow straight up, I get where you're coming from. But just like you had T. Higgins out last time, if you got Lamar, Jay's got left tackle out now, I'm just looking at it from the standpoint that the dual threat that he is, Joe Burrow, as great as he is, still mm -hmm. isn't 100%. And his teammates aren't either. And I look at it from that perspective and the fact that this game is in Baltimore, I'm just inclined to believe on Thursday so, Night Football is, is Lamar. Real quick, can you give me the, the stat? H how long have they trailed this year? 28 minutes, 46 seconds. And that's the least it, through the 10 games? The fewest by any team through 10 games since Shannon Sharp's 1998 Broncos team who went on to win the Super Bowl. And when I look at the Baltimore defense, this is a defense starting the season, talking to Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, they're like, we are the best defense in this division in football. Okay, this is a moment for you guys to show up, to force Joe Burrow to be uncomfortable in the pocket, not leave it on Lamar and this offense to keep having to come back and hold leads. Like, the, it, it really falls on the defense because the, la the three losses, it's been a probably within the last minute and a half of game. That they've those Number leads. one, T. Higgins ain't playing tonight, so that's going to be a big problem for Baltimore. Number two, I'm sorry for Cincinnati. Number two, what's Cincinnati's problem defensively? It's covering tight ends. You got Mark Andrews tonight leading the league in tight ends by with six touchdowns. Yeah. So if you're Lamar Jackson, you're certainly going to target him. You know, you're going to be compromised offensively. Defensively, you're going to be compromised because of your ability or inability to cover tight ends. All of those things, I think, are going to play a role as well. I, I think you, one thing you brought up, I think it's a great point about Cincinnati. Cincinnati has to get going quick. Oh, right? yeah. They have to get going quick. Yeah. Not only because Baltimore just had, they just, Baltimore jumps out of the gate fast, yeah. but I'm just talking about just down well, to down. Yeah. Down to down. If they fall behind as far as okay. in the chains, right. behind as right. far as Baltimore's concerned, they, they let, me throw this out. let me throw this out to y'all. Bengals lose tonight. Season over? No. I'm not there. Mm -mm. I am. I think it's over. Mm -mm. If they, if they, if they, if they lose, lose tonight, I think they're done. They are the Bengals are one and four in the AFC right now, one and four in the AFC, one and four in the AFC. They've already lost two games within the division. They lose to Baltimore, in the, in the crowded AFC right now. Which listen, we're talking about Houston, yes, Indy, yeah, even I know Indy's five and five right now, yes, yeah, Buffalo, okay, Bu Dealer, like Buffalo, Buffalo Steeder, still five and five, Pittsburgh, like. There's a lot of teams, and you you can't afford to keep yeah, losing the conference. Since, they're going to lose out because of the losses just talk, within the conference. Within they're going to lose out to somebody. Conference, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so I don't think tonight is a – it feels like a must win. It does the gravity of it. I think the winner of tonight wins the division, all right? Mm -hmm. it, they, they got, Cincinnati's got five wins. They got to get to ten, right? At least ten. They're, they're playing Pittsburgh next week. Mm -hmm. Then they have the Jags, Indy, Minnesota. I think they win those three games. Jags, Indy, Minnesota. All three. I think they win all three of those, okay. yes. So then we're talking about Pittsburgh twice they have left. Mm -hmm. Tonight, Kansas City. You know they're going to lose one of them to Pittsburgh. One. Okay, so one of them to Pittsburgh. That means out of one left for Pittsburgh, Kansas City, Cleveland, and tonight, they got to get two. So out of, they got to be out of the four games between Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Cleveland, and Kansas City. They got to go. You know who plays Joe Burrow pretty well? Cleveland. Yeah, I mean, like that was, they, Kevin Stefanski for whatever reason, Kevin Stefanski versus Zach Taylor. It's a Kevin Stefanski advantage. I think Stefanski. I, I just don't think because Wood. If we're gonna say one team from the AFC East, we feel great about right now, Miami, right? Buffalo. We got to see what happens. Right. Rest. AFC South is gonna get one team. I do not. If you're telling me I get Indy or Cincy, give me Cincy. Mm -hmm. You know, like Houston. I, I could be in that conversation. And they obviously hold the tiebreaker, but I want to see how how consistent that could be. And then the AFC West, we think Kansas City, and that's it. I'm just saying that they're, they're running out of runway here. Last week, you lose but a game at home against the Houston Texans, who, by the way, are in the AFC. Sure. Right. That you, you're playing a numbers game moving forward right now. Go ahead, Kimberly. Running out of runway doesn't mean the season's over. Though. Right. I, that's where I'm at. Like it's a little because a week ago everybody was saying, "Oh, the Bengals, they are clearly mm. going to win this division." Joe well, Burrow's back. A week later, they lose to the Houston Texans. Now it's like, ugh. And that's season. Season. I, 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 listen, listen, I think it's a must win for the Bengals. The bottom line mm -hmm. is this. You can't lose with so many games within your conference. There's plenty of times, and we've seen this over the course of history. We've seen plenty of times where you roll up, you get on a winning streak, particularly as the season wanes, and all of a sudden you end up on top with a winning record. 
but your record is tied with somebody else you lost to in head-to-head -head sure. competition. So if you have that many losses within the conference, I find it very, very hard to believe that somehow, some way, that's not going to come back to bite you. You're going to end up tied with somebody, and they're going to get the edge.